Right. James, take the ball out there. The floor is all yours. Please. James, that's right, James. Um, it's been a wee while since I've been on the dating scene. Well, actually, quite a long time. <laughs> but when I started again, will they edit that out? <laughs> When I started the dating again, I, I didn't expect to get caught up in the equivalent of a gunfight at the OK Corral. I'll start at the beginning. Well, when I started, I thought I'd better get, some, get a new wardrobe, some new clays. So I went to, you know, the department stores on Princess Street, the like of Burton's and all that, and I was looking for a nice jacket. But I got the shock of my life. They didn't sell men's coats these days in these department stores, nor jackets. It's like folk just stay in nowadays. <laughs> I didn't fancy the computer dating, you know, to sit in night after night, try to get a night out. Is that <laughs> <really just classical? laughs> well, it, out the only jacket that I could get was you know the shiny black dinner jacket you can you know tuxedos so I got that so I thought I'd better go the whole hog and get a, a fancy white shirt and the, the black breeks and all and I was I was feeling just a ticket you know but then I was thinking well where do folk meet each other these days? I, I didn't came. I didn't came. Well, anyway, I was, I was standing at the bus stop, just waiting for the bus, and I was watching all the cars go by. And you know, most of the cars only had the driver in it. Yin, solitary driver. All the solitary women needing rescuing. Well, I thought, I've got the duds for it. I've got the for it. Well, I thought, I want a classy lassie. So I decided to go, you can just outside the Royal Lyceum. <laughs> so I looked for a likely car and I trusted the, the fates on my, my gallant mission. And I took this tennis ball, and as you can see, there's a hole in it there. And what you do is this, I mean, this is confidential. <laughs> <laughs> you put it to the car door lock, and you, like that, and the, just, the switch comes up like that. <laughs> I got in, and I, and I, I waited. I didn't, I didn't have long to wait. There was, there was this big bloke that arrived. He, he thought I was trying to repossess his wife's car, so I got the hell in the head. <laughs> I went round the corner to the Traverse, and I, 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 I checked, and there was definitely a Mamma Mia CD on the back seat. <laughs> the same again. And I didn't have long to wait. Lovely little lassie coming towards me. So as she got in, I got the pink carnation ready, you know. <laughs> she gets in, she takes you in, look at me, and she says, are you after a joyride? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have knocked me out with a feather at <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't even ken you, you thought something. <laughs> Politely, proclaimed, uh, politely declined. <laughs> well, you would think I had enough by then, but I went round the corner of the castle terrace and I saw you in of these 
stretch limos, <laughs> and it was pink. And I've always wanted to see inside Yenavi, you know. And I thought, must be, must be lucky this time. So I tried the passenger door, and I got in, and I sat down. And as soon as I was, uh, I was there, I, I realised it must be one of the American cars, because the steering wheel was on the other side. <laughs> but um, actually, I was in the driver's seat, so I was just about to get out when I heard this female American voice, like sandpaper, for the back seat. <laughs> well, you took your time. <laughs> and I says, pardon? <laughs> Never mind. Just drag me back to my hotel, because I could do with some beauty sleep. I says, sorry, you've got it wrong. I'm no the driver. And she says, ah, fancy. Another of my admirers. Well, I took a quick glance in, in, the, in the rear mirror, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, all I could see was a silhouette. And she told me that, well, that was enough to trigger her life story. And she was saying that um, she was a real beauty in her young days. <coughs> and she made quite a wee bit as a, as a, as a beauty queen, you know. She was winning all the, all, all the contests and all that. And she had all these men running after her, waiting on her hand in fit. She never did, needed to do a, a hand's turn. But... She got a wee bit too long in the tooth and she had to retire, so she didn't ken what to do with herself. So just for a wee hobby, because she, as I say, she still had all these men hanging, <laughs> hanging about. Um, so she decided to grow her nails. <laughs> just then, there was a car went slowly past and it shone the headlights into the into the car. So I couldn't resist a wee, wee quick look in the in the rear mirror. Oh, you should have seen her face. It was like a plued field. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't look a day under 70. <laughs> and before I could squirm, she says, My, aren't you the cute one? <laughs> and the next thing I can, there was a blade at my throat. She says, well, you're going to be mine for tonight. But I thought, oh, dear, dear. Well, I listened to more intently after that. <laughs> <laughs> and she told me that with these long nails, she became quite a celebrity. In fact, she grew her nails until what they were now at three feet long. <laughs> and she used to get a lot of work opening supermarkets, and I'm thinking, she probably didn't need, need the shears, she believed. <laughs> she says, and my men, they do everything for me, and I mean everything. And so I says, could you not just take up knitting or something? <laughs> and so she says, and he tried to be funny. I says, no, really. I was just trying to change the subject. <laughs> it was then that it dawned that this blade tickling my, my throat wasn't a blade at all, but it was in her long fingernails. <laughs> and I could see the other nails fall in suit and they were about to wrap themselves around my body. So I realised... I had to think quick and be fast about it. So very discreetly, I got a hold of the door handle and then I shouted, Well, that's the driver back! And I <laughs> tore myself out of there, but honestly, it was trying to get, your, like, try to get myself out of a threshing machine, but I managed to ride myself out of there and I slammed shut the door. And just then, it was like I was in the middle of a shoot. There was bullets flying all over, um, shrapnel everywhere. And I just took to my heels and I hoped to hell I was running in the right direction. Well, thankfully, I got out there relatively unscathed. I mean, my tux 
tuxedo was ripped to shreds, but actually I think it saved my life because of the shininess of, of the material. She had a hard job getting a hoddish. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my dicky bow tie as well. But as soon as I got home, I checked the news, and it was really queer, because there was no mention of it, about this shoe in the middle of Edinburgh. <coughs> I couldn't understand it the following day, there's nothing on the telly or anything like that. Well, it was just, it was actually just through the week. I thought, well, you can find you just about anything on the internet. So I keyed in, world's longest fingernails, and up it came. This woman, apparently, with the world's longest fingernails, had been touring Britain, but she'd got her fingernails caught in a terrible car door accident. <laughs> <laughs> and she was now recuperating in hospital that she'd had to have had her nails trimmed. And she was doing fine and she said now that she was going to take up the piano. <laughs> so then I realised that I hadn't been in a shootout at all. Because <coughs> you can when you're cutting your nails or clipping your nails, they go all oh, yeah, good. <laughs> so you can imagine what happened when I slammed shut that door. <laughs> it was fingernail shrapnel. <laughs> you know, but when I think about that, particularly during the full moon, the night, I often feel a draft to the back of my neck, and every time I do, Imagine her fingernails gone in the back. But it gives me the cold creeps. It really does. Oh, right. What kind of woman is it I'm looking for? <laughs> <laughs> she must have a good nature. And can how to look after herself. I know I. A good sense of humour, that would be nice, away, uh, nice as well. And her nails, she must keep them in trim, <laughs> preferably to the quick.